well, you're always seeing these wonderful pictures of tomatoes. And I'm always showing off with the uh, multitudes of tomatoes I'm getting. Doesn't matter if it's uh, that variety or other varieties. And I've been very happy growing indoors. Sometimes it's just not all that sexy. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, cleaning is probably one of my least favorite things. But uh, it has helped out with the uh, health of my plants. You'll notice after the cleaning cycle, I still have a, a lot of mineral uh, build up on the inside walls of this uh, grow bowl and it takes um, like citric acid or vinegar to get that off. Basically what I was focused on was doing a um, bristle brush and uh, soap and hot water scrub to help clean up the inside of this uh, grow bowl. One of the things that I can't emphasize enough is to clean the uh, sponges that go with the pumps. It doesn't matter if it's the uh, indoor countertop gardens or the uh, larger units that I use uh, that are called grow pels. This is the primary culprit that uh, blocks the pump and uh, contributes to bad health of plants. I just slid the uh, filter that I showed you down into the slot that goes in front of the uh, pump there, the intake part. And if you are particularly um, crafty, I would say that uh, you might want to maybe uh, adapt your own version of a sponge you know, for filtering because a larger sponge, like you see on pond pumps, would help uh, prolong the cleaning cycle. Something else is when you select a garden, uh, the uh, interior being able to be cleaned easily, the um, hookup is sometimes uh, a little bit troubling because some of the uh, gardens have uh, multiple electrical cords, but this particular one has some of the newer features, such as this uh, just drop-on unit. There is a point in the center there has electrical contact points, and it just sits right on top of there, and that powers uh, the pump, and so that's quite easy to pull off and clean. One other thing that I try to take care of is, <laughs> yeah, drop it into a trash can? No, not really. Uh, the um, root systems oftentimes grow together, and also they get quite long. Uh, the uh, root systems, if you look down the bottom here, they just keep continuing to growing, and it's these really fine grow tips that form that seem to help out with uh, nutrient and water uptake more than the uh, more developed roots that you see up at the top there. So I like to trim the roots and allow for more root tips to grow. So let's take a quick look at uh, what I'm talking about. I typically have a uh, set of scissors that I use just for this purpose and I like to keep those clean uh, because I don't want to have diseases passed uh, off, you know, between different gardens. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is try to get this uh, root system separated. And if I could just kind of push and separate like this, I like that better than cutting. Because when I go to cut, I want to get these root systems down where they're hanging like this. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to take off about one third. So let's come across here. And you want to make sure that as you cut that uh, these roots are um, 
not clinging up here. You want to drop them into the trash can because if you leave them on there, they're going to rot in the container and that's nothing that you want because it's not healthy for the plants. All right, so let's turn this around. And these are quite entangled, so I'm not going to try separating these. However, I will come in and remember I was talking about uh, taking off one third of the roots. So, you know, that's just an approximation, too. So I'll trim that off. These are the uh, larger plants, and uh, the uh, roots are expected to be fairly robust. Whereas uh, these are the uh, smaller miniature plants, and you could tell that the roots are not really all that uh, grown together in comparison. And that's, uh, that's all there is to it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back into that grow bowl, fill it up with water, and I'll show you what else I'm doing. When you fill up your water, uh, try not to go over what they would suggest. Uh, and oftentimes they'll have marks that say this is the maximum amount of water. And you'll notice even though it's a smaller pump that it has the uh, jets that go separated. And by jetting that out on both sides, what happens is the uh, water tends to get turned over as well as ripple and that uh, provides oxygen um, because there's more oxygen from the uh, air to the surface of the water uh, over a rippled surface than just a flat surface. The other thing that I do is I try to take a quick look at the uh, plants and you'll find that uh, they oftentimes want to grow together. So I'll come in and uh, try to take off just like some of the vegetative branches and uh, provide the plants a little better chance of not overlapping. Now, in addition to uh, pruning, like I'm showing you right now, you could also pull off partial cuttings. And one of the things that uh, they don't tell you about when you're doing pruning is that you can take these plants and not only uh, prune them off, but you could also turn them a little bit. Uh, this one in the center, for example, has a large branch that has multiple flower sites, and I don't want to lose those tomatoes by cutting it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it over to that side, and I'm going to turn the plant like that. And that gives me more separation between these larger plants and these smaller plants. So there you have it. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, <laughs> exciting things, but I just wanted to let you know what I do to help take care of these plants because it helps me out with doing things like uh, growing six tomato plants in a small garden. And typically you'd only grow two or three instead of six in a garden like this, but it's just the little tips that you learn over the years that helps out.